So when you first open up Blender, and I am in uh, version 3.1, uh, you'll see uh, this basic scene, basically. The, you're going to have a camera, you're going to have a lamp, and you're going to have the basic default cube. Now, um, for most things that you're going to be using, the basic default cube will suffice. And I know what you're probably thinking is, uh, like, well, how would that work if, like, you're trying to make, I don't know, a ball or something? And uh, there are ways you can uh, you can bevel and you can uh, mess with things to make a ball out of a cube. <laughs> All right, but we'll get we'll, I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll get to that later in a future video. I realized too I forgot to mention earlier. So uh, I, I figure you'll probably have figured this out by now. But if not, um, scroll wheel zooms and holding down scroll wheel uh, allows you to rotate in 3D. Anyways, for this one, I figured we'd just go over some kind of basic uh, basic starting out stuff, and we're going to make a simple little uh, kind of modernistic looking house, and we'll just leave it at that for today. So um, getting started, I guess we'll do some little, uh, some little intro to where some of the stuff is in Blender. Um, absolutely feel free to browse around and just check out all the stuff. Um, you've got your render properties is in this tab right here then underneath there's like formatting in this tab underneath that you've got some like layers under this is scene then world settings here then you have collection settings you have uh, the object settings this is very useful because you can use in here to control where the object is in space you could also have like rotation and uh, scale. You have a modifier tab here, and that has all the stuff like uh, uh, array, for example, which uh, keeps um, spacing out and duplicating your object over, or uh, subdivision surface, which is another one that's um, very good to use. Underneath that. Um, You've got some particle settings, such as hair and uh, emitter. Under that, there's uh, the physics tab. Then there's some object constraints here. Then you have uh, the object data properties, which uh, you know, which has which has a lot of stuff in it, but we're not going to get into it right now. Then there's the uh, objects material tab here. Where you can uh, you can change materials and colors and stuff, and uh, those those are the main ones you're going to be using uh, for most uh, most things. Um, you can see here uh, we have up at the top. There's some different settings. There's like an onion skin setting, which allows you to see through the object. Very very useful. There's wireframe mode, solid mode. Material preview mode and um, rendered view. Okay. So um, let's get started on making a little house. So if we uh, if we left click on our cube here, you'll see that uh, it's now selected. It has this yellow um, kind of halo around it to show that it's selected. And um, you'll notice there's not really much we can do with it here. Like we have some controls, like we can move it around on different axes. Axes, <laughs> excuse me. You can rotate it. You can uh, scale it. But you can't do very much. Now, um, that is because there is an edit mode, and we are not currently in edit mode. So to get to edit mode, all you have to do is uh, select the object you want and press tab. Once you press tab, now you'll be able to see a whole lot more controls just popped up. There's several different uh, manipulator uh, tools up here. We have vertex select, which allows you to select single vertex for our vertices. There's edge select, which allows you to select uh, edges. And face select, which allows you to select faces. All of these are very useful. Uh, I advise going back and forth between all of them because they all have a time and a place. 
there's some uh, more controls down here too like uh, but yeah again let's not get ahead of ourselves because for right now let's just set up kind of a basic uh, room that we can use to make our little scene in so um, if you press a you can select the entire object you can also select by uh, shift clicking and you can go around and select all the faces you can also also select by uh, pressing C and this brings up this circle selector and then you can just uh, keep pressing C and clicking on things and you'll be able to circle select everything I mentioned before that there's kind of an onion skin you can turn on so if you toggle x-ray up here you can see all the different sides and you can even select through the cube itself so if you press C and scroll up real big you can select everything at once so that's just a few ways to select a bunch of things or a bunch of ways to select one thing okay um, now that everything's selected I am going to uh, I'm going to come to this uh, this uh, the XYZ coordinate navigator tool here. I don't know what it's actually called, but I'm going to uh, click on. Let's see, let's click on either X or Y is fine, so we can have the side straight on view. And I'm gonna hold down on this uh, Z here so that we can move the model straight up or down. I want to get it so the bottom of this model is perfectly lined up with the uh, green uh, y-axis here. But uh, you'll notice that it's really hard to perfectly line anything up like this, just eyeballing it. So what you can do instead is you can select the z-axis for the cube here and then hold down control and holding down control while clicking on the Z will allow you to uh, move it in increments so to reiterate hold down control select the uh, the Z and you can move it up by increments so now it's perfectly on the um, on the origin here and this works in any direction too. Um, all you have to do is hold down control and just drag. So um, this is uh, this is like uh, it's a little too small to be a house at this size. So um, our room. So I'm gonna select this top face here, and I am going to go back into the side view. I'm gonna press control and uh, drag the Z up again just uh, so it's just higher. I'm gonna select this edge here or this face and I'm gonna press X and X usually means delete in this case it will bring up a menu of what to delete so we can delete the vertices the edges the faces etc I'm gonna press delete face so now we have kind of an open uh, view into our uh, into our room here and um, let's see I'm gonna select this uh, this face here and I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna drag it out I'm gonna select this face here I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna drag it out then I'm gonna select this face and I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna drag it out I realized too I forgot to mention earlier so uh, I, I figure you'll probably have figured this out by now but if not um, scroll wheel zooms and holding down scroll wheel uh, allows you to rotate in 3d okay so um, now that we've got kind of a basic room going here um, let's see I think that we should add in kind of where the windows are gonna be and um, this is way too big for a window, but we can uh, we can make this uh, we can divide it out a bit smaller so we have um, more space for the windows and for the walls. So if you look on our toolbar here, you'll see that we have this thing called loop cuts, and I'm gonna select that. 
Now um, you'll see that we have this kind of yellow guideline here. And that just means that um, if you select, it'll put a loop cut there. So I'm going to add in this loop cut. And I'm going to hold down uh, left click when I do. And I'm going to drag the loop cut up like that. Then I'm going to add another one. And I'm going to drag it down like that. So uh, now we have kind of a window space. I might actually, I'm going to actually circle select these edges here and just bring them down just a little bit like that. I'm going to add in another loop cut here. And um, I want to separate this out so that we've got um, a loop cut kind of on each side. But uh, I don't want to eyeball it. I want to line it up perfectly. So I'm going to press uh, Control B to bevel. And now um, you can pull this apart. And you'll see that we've got um, a bevel going on here. I'm going to pull it out to about here. I'm going to turn the number of segments here in this uh, these settings here. I'm going to turn the number of segments down to 1. Now you'll see uh, it's added more geometry. So we can select this middle part here where we want the window to be. And um, I'm going to, I'm going to actually, I'm going to add in one or two more loop cuts. So I'm going to add one here and I'm going to up the number to two. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to come back and I'm going to circle select all these uh, window bits. And I want to inset this. So what insetting does is it um, basically, well, it insets. So um, by default, if you uh, want to inset something, you can press I on your keyboard. So the key I will inset. And um, But I don't want to inset all these uh, window bits together. I want to inset them separately. So I'm going to press I, and I'm going to press I again. And now I should be able to uh, inset them all separately. So to reiterate, double tap the key I. And then you should be able to inset all your faces uh, separately. Now. Um, I want to extrude this window out a little bit. So what that means is when you extrude something, it's basically like um, uh, you, you add more geometry so you can push something one direction or the other. So if you press E on your keyboard, the letter E, you can, uh, you can extrude faces in either direction. So um, I'm going to press I again to inset these one more time. And then I'm going to press E to extrude them back one more time. OK. Um, I think now we should go over some texturing real fast. Because uh, yeah, and we'll just leave the room as it is right now. And I'm going to show you how to add in some materials. So if you go uh, up along the top here, you have layout, modeling, sculpting, UV editing, texture paint, and shading. And we're going to go over to the shader. And uh, usually by default, it's in uh, the um, material preview here. So um, we're just going to go straight up to rendered. But um, you'll notice it doesn't look very good. And that's because we are in Eevee, which is a real-time render engine. We want to switch over to Cycles. So if you come back over onto this panel here, you'll see that there is Render Properties. And if we select that, we can change between Eevee and Cycles. Now, by uh, default, Cycles is on CPU rendering, which is fine. But uh, if, uh, if you have a GPU, I advise using GPU Compute instead because it's much faster. Anyways, the main difference between Cycles and Eevee is that Eevee is real time, so it's faster. But Cycles is, has, uh, is a path tracer or has ray tracing, basically. And that allows the light to bounce around and act way more uh, naturally. So um, 
In this case, it's going to help us a lot because we can make actual windows that work. To start things off, I want to change this light. Right now, I have a point light, which is set up right here. But I want to change it um, to a sun lamp. So in the object data properties for the light, uh, you'll see that we're on point. We also have sun, spot, and area light. So if we select sun, you'll see that there's this, uh, there's this little tab here, this little yellow dot. And we can, um, if we select that, we can control where the lamp is going. So I'm going to point it at these windows. However, you'll notice that uh, this is very, very bright. Um, so I'm going to turn this down to maybe 40. And that should look a lot better in a minute. I'm also going to go to the object properties here. And I'm going to drag this down on the Z and uh, reposition it so it's pointed straight in the windows like that. If we come back around to the front, you'll see uh, nothing's really changed. It still looks the same in here, but that is because we don't have a window uh, texture, our window material that is see-through. So to start this off, I'm going to select the material properties here. And I'm going to click uh, this little plus button, add a texture, and I'm going to select new. And I'm going to call this uh, room wall. OK. I'm going to add another texture. I'm going to press new. I'm going to call this glass. I'm going to select this uh, principled BSDF shader. And I'm going to press X to delete it. Then um, I'm going to press Shift A to add in a new uh, material or texture. And I'm going to search for a mix shader. I'm going to plug that into the surface. I'm going to Shift A again and search for a glossy shader or glossy BSDF. I'm going to plug that into the top of the mix. And I'm going to search again with Shift A and look for Transparent BSDF. And that's going to go into the bottom. Now, if you look in preview, we have this kind of uh, see-through material. And you can use the roughness on the glossy here to control how reflective it is. And you can use the mix factor here to control how much how see-through it is or how reflective it is. Um, but you'll notice uh, it's still not affecting our windows. And that is really easy to fix. If you press tab with our object selected, um, and you select the bits of our object that are windows, um, you can then go over here and uh, click on this glass shader. And you'll see that there is a little button that says assign right here. And if you click assign, then uh, these faces are going to be assigned to the glass shader. So you see that we have uh, we have light now spilling through our windows. And um, let's see, there's a lot more I want to do on this project, with showing you how to do more cool advanced textures and uh, modeling methods. But I think I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it here for today because uh, this is kind of a long one already and this is kind of like a basic little modeling and uh, basic little texturing uh, video um, to hopefully help you begin on your blender journey so uh, yeah I hope this was helpful and I will see you in the coming week